Hey guys, welcome back to Small Screen Shakedown. Today we'll talk about the origin story of Nickelodeon and how it came to be. Let's head into it. Pinwheel, 1977 to 1979. Pinwheel. Dr. Vivian Horner, an educator who worked for the Bank Street College of Education, conceptualized the idea of Nickelodeon. She also produced her first original series, Pinwheel, which was launched on Cube, a local C3 channel in Columbus, Ohio, on December 1, in 1977. In 1979, when it was renamed Nickelodeon, that C3 channel, which would eventually make the move to national television, would start exclusively broadcasting Pinwheel episodes on a loop. While technically nameless, the guide of the Cube label Pinwheel because it was the sole program on the channel. Cube was planning to bring children's TV to a national audience after Pinwheel saw some success. The name Nickelodeon for then upcoming network was produced by Joseph Lowsey, a New York based designer. Lowsey saw the word Nickelodeon was a natural fit, that the Nickelodeon was an entertainment dispensing device at the turn of the century. The sound of the world was nice, easily rolled off the tongue. Gus Hauser, CEO of Warner Cable, eventually selected Lowsey's proposal from a list of 150 names. The Savoy Channel and the Rainbow Network were, were among the proposed names for the channel. 1979 to 1987 relaunch as Nickelodeon. The team behind Cube announced in December 1978 that their programming would move to a national television. Initially, the children's channel, now rebranded as Nickelodeon, was set for launch in February 1979. Nickelodeon debuted to Warner Cable's franchises across the United States on April 1, 1979, making it the first children's cable channel ever. The airing of Pinwheel at 10 a.m. began its first day of broadcasting. Nickelodeon was completely commercial free in its early years and it was used as lost leader or its then parent company, Warner Cables. Having a commercial free children's channel would prove useful in franchising their cable system across the nation as the company saw it, with the advantage putting them over rival companies such as HBO. The first model ever used in Nickelodeon advertisement was the son of the designer, Joseph Losey II. While Lubelin, Smith, and Carnese exclusive designed the logo's front, Losey's aim was to substitute the illustration of a boy in kinkers, British flat cap, large suspenders, tiptoed on a stylish iron train step looking into the the Nickelodeon front of the graphic of the line illustration of the man peering into the Nickelodeon. The scheduled redesign was never permitted by available time and new management. The network explained that its audience reached rapidly, first to other Warner Cable system across the nation and eventually to other cable providers. On RCA Satcom 1, which went on to orbit one week earlier on March 26, it was distributed via satellite originally transmitted on transponder space pod from the televangelized Jim and Tammy Five Baker. Nickelodeon usually designates 1979 as the year of channel's official launch, despite its previous history on the cube system under the pinwheel name. Now showing including Dusty Treehouse, first row features, special delivery, what will they think of next, were adding to the lineup in 1980s, Livewire, and in 1981, a new logo consisting of a disco ball overlaid with multicolored Nickelodeon text was introduced by the network. Show. During its early years, other shows that were the part of Nickelodeon's regular schedule included The Third Eye, Standby Lights, A Camera, Hey Action, and The World of Mr. Wizard. The channel shifted its daily programming of to 13 hours every day on April 12, 1981, now airing from 8 a.m. to 9 p.m., seven days a week, Eastern and Pacific time. By this point, the movie channel had become a separate 24 hours channel, and Nickelodeon had started transferring its channel space to the Alpha Repertory Television Services. During its off hours, a fine arts focused network owned the Hearst Corporation and ABC joint ventures Hearst ABC Video Services, ARTS, became the Arts and Entertainment Network in 1984. After ARTS merged, with NBC's ST, Warner Amex, Satellite Entertainment began to divest its assets around the time and spun of Nickelodeon and two other channels, the MTV Music Network and now defunct radio television station into the newly formed MTV Network subsidiary. Nickelodeon began accepting corporate services, a method of common public television for its programming in order to increase revenue. 1984 to 1996, the golden age. At first, Nickelodeon struggled operating at a loss of 10 million until 1984. The network had lacked successful programs against Against the odds of going great included showing on the network that failed to gain traction during its first few years, which stagnated viewership, finishing dead last among all US cable channels. At one point, Bob Pittman, president of the MTV network, after firing his management staff, turned, turned to Fred Seibert and Alan Goodman, who created MTV's iconic IDs as the last few years earlier, to revitalize Nickelodeon, leading to what many believe to be the golden age of the channel. To rebrand the network, Seibert and Goodman's company Fred Allen Inc. teamed up with Tom Corey and Scott 
Persian NAS advertising company. The pinball logo was replaced with a new one with varied orange backgrounds, most notably a splat design, with the name Nickelodeon overlaid in the balloon typeface that would be used over the next 24 hours and 11 months in the hundreds of different variations. In order to create new channel IDs, Fred and Alan also enlisted assistance of animators, writers, producers, and dog whoop group, the Jai 5. In October 1984, the rebranding went into use and Nickelodeon would become the dominant channel in children's programming within six months and remain so far for 26 years, even in the midst of increasing competition from other child-oriented channels such as Disney Channel and Cartoon Network in the most recent years. Due to its status as the first American television network aimed at children's, it also started promoting itself as the first kids network. Nickelodeon began accepting traditional advertising alongside the rebranding. So, what do you think about Nickelodeon? Did you know about its origin story? Let us know in the comments below. This brings us to the end of our video. I hope you enjoyed it. Hit like if you did and don't forget to subscribe to our channel so you never miss out on any of our videos in the future. Also, watch the two videos that are on your screen because I'm sure you'll love them. With that, I'll see you in the next video.